Thank you for listening to the Begina Institute podcast. Please join us on Facebook at facebook.com slash Begina Institute, or you can join our email list at httpbegina.com and share these recordings with your family and friends. A'udhu billahi minash shaitanir rajeem. وَإِن كُنتُمْ فِي رَيْبٍ مِّمَّا نَزَّلْنَا عَلَىٰ عَبْدِنَا فَأْتُوا بِسُورَةٍ مِّن مِّثْلِهِ وَادْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِّن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنتُمْ صَادِقِينَ رَبِّ اشْرَحْ لِي صَدْرِي وَيَسِّرْ لِي أَمْرِي وَاحْلُلْ عُقْدَةً مِّن لِّسَانِي يَفْقَهُوا قَوْلِي والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد الأنبياء والمرسلين وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استنى بسنته إلى يوم الدين ثم أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته وإن كنتم في ريب مما نزلنا على عبدنا This is the ayah we uh, almost finished discussing last night and if in fact you uh, all of you or any of you are in any doubt whatsoever in regards to what we have sent down upon our slave فأتوا بسورة then bring a surah من مثله that is anything like it. min dunillah. This is the part we didn't discuss yesterday. And call on your witnesses, the witnesses all of you have, any besides Allah. A couple of things in this portion of the ayah. The first of them is, there is mahara, expertise. Allah did not say bring your experts, He said bring your witnesses. This changes the, uh, it expands the, the meaning of the text. One of the things it does is it includes those false gods that they worshipped, and they were calling on them as witnesses to the truth. So Allah is basically making a mockery. These things are your truth, why don't you bring them as witness? So it's a kind of mockery of their false beliefs. The other thing that happens here is for them, the ultimate, uh, the, the witness of truth was the highest form of speech. In other words, the poet, the eloquent speaker, these were the leaders of the society because of their expert uh, knowledge of the language. So you have people that can testify to whether something is, you know, the word of insanity or it's the highest form of eloquence. You have those experts, and the, a term for experts used in ancient Arabic is witnesses. Because they testify to whether or not something is legit or not. So they're doing the testimony, they're the certifiers. So Allah says, why don't you bring forward your, the highest form of your testifiers. And they, try, they tried this already. For instance, Walid ibn Mughira, and the Qur'an dedicates a passage even, to his you know, experience with the Qur'an and how he has to come up with an explanation, this, this isn't poetry. I know poetry, this ain't it. Okay, this is absolutely not insanity. If we call it insanity or the word of a madman, then we're gonna negate our own selves. It's gonna invalidate our own claims. So what can we come up with? Well, how about this one? Just, let's just call it magic. It causes separation between father and son. In other words, let's create hysteria about this Qur'an so that people avoid listening to it because they're afraid of magic like they would be afraid of a sickness or an ep- epidemic or something like that. So anyway, Allah says, وَدْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ مِن دُونِ اللَّهِ إِن كُنْتُمْ صَادِقِينَ Bring forward your witnesses, if in fact you are, as opposed to Allah, other than Allah, any other than Allah, if in fact you're truthful. And here again, something very subtle in the Arabic of the Qur'an that doesn't come out in the English translation. The word غَيْرَ in Arabic means other than. So if you say, وَدْعُوا شُهَدَاءَكُمْ غَيْرَ الله. Bring your witnesses other than Allah. That meaning is the same. But dun, dawwana in Arabic is to be inferior. So here when Allah says other than Allah, He's actually kind of pointing to the fact that whoever you call is going to be inferior to Allah anyway. How are you going to bring a witness that's going to compete with the word of Allah? Wa kafa billahi shahidan. Allah is enough Himself as a witness. Then He says, فَإِلَّمْ تَفْعَلُوا If in fact you haven't been able to do so thus far. Lam refers to the past. So if you hadn't been able to do so, acknowledging that this, this entire span of the life of the Messenger والسلام, unsuccessful attempts have been made, nothing has been brought forward that can compete with this Qur'an. وَلَن تَفْعَلُوا And then, so first there's a commentary about what's gone on so far, and now he says, and you won't be able to do so. So he not only comments on their failure in the past, but openly challenges them, guarantees them, you won't be able to do so. وَلَن تَفْعَلُوا فَاتَّقُوا النَّارِ الَّتِي وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ Then protect yourselves, be cautious of, be fearful of the fire. This is also very beautiful and subtle. The Qur'an began, this surah began with people of taqwa. But taqwa of who? Of Allah. But it's, it's clearly been demonstrated that these people, these people at the point of no return have no fear of Allah. 
So now they can't be invited to the fear of Allah anymore. What are they invited to? If you can't fear Allah, then you know what? Why don't you go and try to protect yourselves from the fire? There, here also there is sarcasm. In other words, how are you going to protect yourself? Go ahead, make all the precautions you can. It's coming after you. This surah also has a lot of sarcasm against kuffar. Already we learned, Allahu yastahzi'u bihim. Allah is the one making fun of them. Here we're learning, فَاتَّقُوا nar. How are they going to have taqwa from the fire when they're trying to produce a competitor to the Qur'an? They're guaranteeing themselves hell. So this is a means of sarcasm. Later on in the surah, we'll find other places. For example, بِئْسَمَا يَأْمُرُكُمْ بِهِ إِمَانُكُمْ The Israelites will be told, what a horrible thing your iman tells you to do. Your faith? This is what you call faith? What terrible things your faith tells you to do? You know, Allah didn't say, your kufr tells you to do bad things. He's being sarcastic with them. He, later on he says about the hypocrites and the munafiqu and the, the Israelites together, he says, فَمَا أَصْبَرَهُمْ عَلَى النَّارِ What amazing patience they have to withstand the flames. You know, these are, this is sarcasm of Allah manifest in this surah. And this is appropriate because the people we're dealing with were the worst in their, their uh, insults and their criticisms against Allah's book. Anyhow, وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ hijara. So why don't you protect yourself from flames, the fuel of which is people and stones. Allah mentions this fire is flamed by the, the fuel of it instead of being wood or oil or things like that. It is fueled by people and stones. Now people of course, those who deserve hellfire. Stones, some ulama commented, this is also found in tafsir of some sahaba. They used to worship idols made of stone. So you will burn along with your idols. You will burn with these stones that you worship along with, with you. So وَقُودُهَا النَّاسُ وَالْحِجَارَةِ Also others commented that a fire made of stone, meaning lava and melted stone, is no, there's no comparison between that flame and that intensity and the, the flame of anything else. There's no, compar no, no real comparison. So Allah alludes to the intensity of this flame. This flame. Then He says, أُعِدَّتْ لِلْكَافِرِينَ This has been prepared for الْكَافِرِينَ Those who are bent upon disbelief, those who are deniers. I didn't get to mention this before, but the word kafir in Arabic comes from kafara, to bury a seed inside the ground. Kuffar in Arabic, which we know as disbelievers, that's actually in the Qur'an, in Surah Al-Fatih, it's also used in the meaning of farmers. In the meaning of farmers, the word same word, kuffar. Why? Because what does a farmer do? He plants the seed in the ground. The idea of calling a disbeliever kafir is that he already had the truth inside him before he even came to this earth. That was, the seed of truth was already there. He buried it inside and never let it see the light of day. The light of Allah came and wanted to come in contact with the light that was inside him, which Allah describes as nurun ala nur. There's a light inside you, there's a light from revelation, light upon light, that phrase you may have heard before, right? But this light inside of him, he buries it. Because he buries it, it's never able to meet that light, so this is called kafir. So uiddat lil kafirin, if you want to look at a literary explanation, it has been prepared for those who buried the truth inside and kept it there. These are the disbelievers. Then he turns to the opposite. And he says, وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Now, here, Allah Azza wa Jal could have said, وَأُبَشِّرُ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَوْ التَّبْشِيرِ لِلَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Meaning, congratulations to those who believe. But actually, he commanded his messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, told him, you congratulate those who believe. You congratulate those who believe. So now, you have to understand this, this remarkable thing that's happening here in, the, in between the lines. The challenge was against the Qur'an, wasn't it? Produce a surah like the Qur'an. But how is the Qur'an coming to them? The Qur'an is not coming to them by email, <laughs> or by any kind of broadcast. How are they coming into contact with the Qur'an? Not even on paper. They're coming into contact with the Qur'an by means of the Messenger of Allah wasallam. So a denial of the Qur'an, at the same time necessarily is a denial of the Messenger. The two things are one and the same. As far as denial is concerned, they're one and the same. So now on the one hand, they've denied the Qur'an, but at the same time that means they have done kufr against the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Now that same Messenger is being told, you from this same book that they're denying, congratulate those who believe. وَبَشِّرْ you, you congratulate those who uh, believe. وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ And have acted righteously. This condition has been added. You see, if you say, وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا Congratulate those who believe. الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا includes three kinds of people. Now this is not commonly understood. Alladhina amanu includes people who really have faith inside. Alladhina amanu also includes people who have weak iman. They have weak faith. But even then when Allah says, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu, they're included in it. Actually, Ya ayyuhalladhina amanu also includes hypocrites. It even includes hypocrites. Why? Because even they claim to believe. 
So when Allah says, those of you who claim to believe, those of you who have professed Iman, then it includes all three groups. But the congratulations is not to all three groups. So to make it more clear and restricted, Allah says, وَبَشِّرِ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ No, congratulate those who've professed to be- their belief, they've entered Iman, and they act righteously, thus confirming their belief. So it's a more restricted group than just saying, الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا And if, if this is confusing you a little bit, I'll tell you briefly, Allah Azza wa says, for example, He says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَا لَكُمْ Those of you who believe, what's wrong with you? Now if, they, if, if يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا only refers to true believers, well, there's nothing wrong with true believers. When Allah says, إِذَا قِيلَ لَكُمْ انْفِرُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ اثَّاقَلْتُ مِنَ الْأَرْضِ When you're told, march forward in Allah's path, you, your feet get planted into the earth. This is the attitude of the hypocrite. But the ayah didn't begin, O oh, those of you that are hypocrites. It began, O oh, those of you who believe. Similarly, very clear-cut case in Surah Al-Saf. يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا لِمَا تَقُولُونَ مَا لَا تَفْعَلُونَ those of you who claim to believe, why do you say what you don't do? Well, who does that? Whose attitude is of saying something and doing something else? That's the hypocrite. But even when they were addressed, what phrase is used? Alladina amanu. So it includes all three, but then when Allah restricts it to the true believers, then He adds a condition, which is وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ أَنَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ That especially and only for them, there are gardens at the foots of which rivers are flowing. You've heard this many times. Gardens underneath which rivers flow. If you're reading English translations often, you've heard this phrase over and over again, Allah describing paradise in this way. But we don't stop to think about it. We don't stop to think about it. Understand something, even in this modern day, after thousands of years have passed, century after century has passed, even to this day, the highest real estate is waterfront properties. And it's at an elevation. If your property is at a low elevation, that it's susceptible to flooding and all kinds of other problems. But if your property is at a high elevation, then if there are any problems, then you know, they, 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 they trickle down and your property is still safe. And the higher it is, the better view it is. These real estate agents will go and take you straight to the window. Check out the view. You know, check out the balcony. They'll take you there. And you'll find the higher the floors are in high-rise buildings, the more they charge you. And, and, and even in hotels, if your hotel like window is facing the ocean property, the ocean side, then they charge you more. This idea of human beings being able to view water from their homes, right? This is even precious to human beings today, even today. So Allah Azza wa Jalla tells us things that are, are innate inside of us. What I'm trying to get at is, when Allah talks about Jannat, gardens, even gardens, you know, I used to live in, uh, in, on the East Coast, and when I, first I got married, we used to live in New Jersey for a little while, South Jersey. This is right by the Atlantic Ocean. And all these millionaires live there, right? So there are apartment complexes and all of a sudden there are these at least, each property is at least two acres. And these are waterfront properties. And the front yard is about an acre, right? Lined with trees, high walls. You can't even see inside the house until you get to the gate, which is kind of a, a, a grill, so you can see through. So when you're driving, you get a little peek inside the mansion and you go, whoa, that's nice. <laughs> you know, the trees covered the entire driveway, goes all the way inside and behind it you could see the ocean. This idea of beautifying gardens, this idea of having a, a, a nice lawn, you know, greenery, shrubbery. These are things that are innate inside human beings. You know, to, even in people that live in places like the concrete jungle in New York City, you know what they'll do? They'll get the apartment on the 10th floor, but their windows covered with greenery. And they'll put like flowers and things like that and hang plants and palm trees. Why? Because they want that imagery. And if they can't have that, at least they'll put a picture of some greenery in their house. So this is innate inside human beings. Allah gives us what we want. Look, you and I, and I'll probably end with this ayah today, you and I are going to struggle even if you're not a believer. Even if someone's not a Muslim. You ask them at the end of the day, any hard working human being, what do you want to work towards? What do you want to get? You ask a man living in America, you ask a man or woman living in China, you ask a man or woman living in Indonesia, anywhere else. What do you want to do with your life? What's the final end game? You know what most people will tell you? At least I want to buy a house. At least I want a house. That's what I want to work up towards. And maybe when you're younger, you don't think like that. When you get, start getting older, you think about the acquisition of your own land, property. This, this idea of wanting something permanent that's not going to go away, is inside us. And if you're living in a house that's for rent, every day you think, how much have I saved now so I can put down for a house? How can, how can I make this situation permanent? 
Because you feel like you're unstable, you're not really settled if you're living on rent, and you don't have something to your name, or it's not paid for, etc. This is inside of us. Allah put this inside of us, and one of the wisdoms of that is, so you'll really learn to long for paradise. Because He's giving you real estate that's permanent. And He's giving it to you custom made just for you. You know, it's one thing to buy a foreclosed home, and a home that's like, it's, the, the price is right, but nothing else is, you know. <laughs> it's, there's one thing to do that. But there's, the, there's another to buy a house, or to get a house, to acquire a house that is exactly what you want. Laid out exactly on the terms you want. And sometimes when you have your idea of the house, the contractor comes and says, this is, this is going to run you pretty, pretty a lot. If you want it this way or that way, it's going to be a little more expensive. Oh, a kitchen over here? No, I can't do that. It's going to cost you extra. And then you compromise your dreams and you say, okay, I'll settle for less. Allah says, I'll give you exactly what you want. And I won't give you yard, a yard, I'll give you yards. And understand the psyche. Look, Allah is talking to Sahaba. Some of them have left their homes. They have no home, they're homeless. Some of them are living in Al Masjid al Nabawi. These are Ashab al Sufa. These are the, basically the bankrupt of the Sahaba. And now Allah is saying, you know what? You haven't lost anything. I'm gonna, get you, I'm gonna get you real estate, and this is in the middle of the desert, I'm gonna get you gardens. Forget gardens, there'll be rivers flowing underneath them. And you know, lakes can have stale water. You know, oceans can have their, their, their problems, you could even have dangerous things, but rivers that are flowing have beautiful crystal clear water, subhanAllah. أَنَّ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهَا الْأَنْهَارِ Then he says, كُلَّمَا رُزِقُوا مِنْهَا مِنْ ثَمَرَةِ الرِّزْقَةِ At least we finished this ayah today. كُلَّمَا رُزِقُوا مِنْهَا مِنْ ثَمَرَةِ الرِّزْقَةِ Every time they are given provision to it, from it, as, as in terms of fruit as provision, so they're given all kinds of fruits here. What do they say? قَالُوا هَذَا الَّذِي رُزِقْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ This is the thing that was given to us last time. They're not complaining here, you need to understand. You know when, you, when you, uh, a, 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 a dessert is placed before you, and you say, oh my God, I've had this before, this is awesome. <laughs> That's what's happening. They, they, they brought this fruit, they say, yes, that again. You ever see that with your children? Like they love this flavor of ice cream, you put it in front of them, and they start like, you know, takbir even before they've started eating the ice cream, because they're excited. I know what this tastes like. This is going to be amazing. So they say, هَذَا الَّذِي رُزِقْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِ Is that whining? Ah, oh, we had this yesterday. That's not what this is saying. They're saying, yes, this is what we had before. And then Allah says, وَأُتُوبِهِ مُتَشَابِهًا It will be brought to them in similar fashion. In other words, it will appear to them, to, it will look to them as though it's the same. But then it's actually not going to be the same. When they taste it, it tastes better. And it tastes different from even last time. And so they say, oh, I can't wait to have this next time. When the next time it's brought, they're like, yes, I had this before, but they taste it, it's better and more unique than the last time. You know, this doesn't even happen in the best restaurants. Your favorite item in a restaurant, you say, I love eating that from that restaurant. You go there, you eat it. You say, next time I'm going to order the same thing, but it's not as good as last time. <laughs> it, there's no consistency in this dunya. The ingredients can be off a little bit. The proportions can be off, but not in Allah's paradise. وَأُتُوبِهِ مُتَشَابِهًا And finally, وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا أَزْوَاجٌ مُطَهَّرًا And in, especially for them, there will be purified spouses. Purified spouses. Now under, this, this is, since it's the last ayah, I'll just make a quick comment, maybe we'll talk about it in more detail tomorrow inshaAllah. One of the last pleasures of this paradise that Allah mentions, as a climax, is they will have, especially for them, they will be purified spouses. What is that telling us? A purified spouse in this dunya is a glimpse of Jannah in the Akhirah. A good spouse in this dunya, because Allah is giving us that over there. When we have that in this dunya, and this is why the Messenger tells us, alayhi salatu wasalam, if you're, your good spouse, your believing spouse, will become your spouse in paradise as well. This is, this is a gift of Allah Azza wa Jalla to us. وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا أَزْوَاجٌ مُطَهَّرَةٌ Purified spouses. And this purification, the, the, what makes them purified is talked in more detail in Surah Al-Rahman. In Surah Al-Rahman, the idea of spouses and what they're like and what makes them purified is discussed in, in, in great length. Anyhow, وَلَهُمْ فِيهَا أَزْوَاجٌ مُطَهَّرَةٌ وَهُمْ فِيهَا خَالِدُونَ And in it, and only in it, they will remain permanently. There is no permanent residence, even if you have a green card. There is no staying forever. This is the only place that they will stay forever. Hum fiha khalidun. This promise is given, this congratulations is given to believers. You know, it's like a certificate. Everywhere else they turn, they were called fools. A nu'minu kama amana sufaha. A few ayat before we read. We should believe like these idiots, like these fools believe. Munafiqoon were calling them fools. Allah is commanding His Messenger, no, don't call them fools, go and congratulate them. 
Shake their hand, honor them. You have earned the highest degree of reward anybody can earn. You've earned the highest, highest honor possible. So Allah says at the end, whom fiha khalidun, in it and in it alone they will remain. SubhanAllah. May Allah make us all the people of paradise. May Allah accept all of our ibadat from us and make us of those who are worthy of the congratulations of His Messenger. Barakallahu li wa lakum fil Quran al Hakim. Wa nafa'ni wa iyakum bil ayati wa dhikr al Hakim. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar Ashhadu an la Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Ashhadu an la ilaha illa 